What's up, guys? This is Alex from X Trades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. And um, you know, this week, I'm sorry, last week we, you know, we had a pretty uneventful week in the market. Um, pretty much traded in a range on the indexes, and we didn't really see any big moves or anything like that. Which I mean, we kind of expected looking at the seasonality. It was only averaging like a 0.3% return on the S SPX S&P. So. Um, we kind of had to pay more attention to individual names last week, and we did have a pretty good watch list. So um, make sure you turn in this week, go review last week, get some educational value out of it, and um, just let me know if you need help with anything. And before we start to go in here, um, just please like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel here on X Trades. We're trying to get our stuff to hit the algorithm more. It would mean the world to us. So let's go ahead and get into our first setup here. This is Pan W um, for Palo Alto Networks. So this is a pretty clear setup, um, I would say, for shorts. Um, we're looking at puts on this. You got test number one, test number two. This is a test three rejection, where we also have a gap. Um, ideally, as you've seen with my other gap plays, you're usually looking for it to fill. It would close up, and then probably curl up about there. So that's just something to watch for puts. Oh, we'll accidentally get. gap. It's just something to watch for puts, um, as usual. You're going to want to see it open up Monday within the downtrend, showing clear signals of selling, just like last week. Because you, you saw last week we had, you know, setups that were good for calls and puts. Um, assuming one confirmation, you know, was able to give you the confirmation to go ahead and take puts. Um, but yeah, so you do have a clear rejection right here. Just make sure it opens up, you know, within the downtrend. Look for, you know... Uh, follow through selling around the open and you should get a nice little gap fill attempt um, Option contracts you're gonna be looking at, you know at the money something with at least seven days out um, Swing trading you're looking at you know a minimum of 30 days expiration something like that and that'll give you time to You know maybe get this gap fill but you have to be careful because it did beat earnings here um, Looks like the revenue barely beat um, by a slim margin here compared to the estimate, um, but they did beat on EPS pretty good. So didn't really look too much into their earnings report this time, but it's just something to take note of that you know this this is a gap up from earnings, um, so that could be you know a positive outlook. If it did decide to break out, it'd give you a good um, call trade to the upside. You just have to look out for this 176, but right now it's not really the focus um, until it breaks out. You know, same with uh, last week's setups. Um, they were all within the downtrend, so you know you were mainly looking for puts at first, um, with the exception of calls if it breaks out. So, yep, just uh, wait for confirmation as usual. It's all trading is just waiting, waiting and learning, and um, make sure you get that confirmation. Next, we're going to Boeing. So this is a pretty clear bull flag setup. Um, Trading over your uh, both your 250 moving averages, made it up to this um, resistance right here, all the way from August it looks like. Broke out a little bit, made new resistance, but this one. Well, let me go back here real quick. You do have a little um, rally base, rally demand zone. Let me add that in real quick, and you can see it reacted perfectly perfectly to it. You get a nice um bullish candle here if you see that probably make this a little bit bigger so yeah really nice bull flag setup um, if we go to the four hour it's a little more a little more clear um you know you got the pole right here at the pole so you got your flag pole you got it forming and by the way, this is unconfirmed because you're not broken out yet um so I set you can see this little timer I set an alert at the upper trend line, so go ahead on your charts, um, whenever you have time, draw this upper trend line, right click it, set alert, and um, you know, just type in breakout so you know what it is when you know your alert does hit. And you can see I did that there. Um, and you can even go back and you know edit them if you want to. So yeah, this is a really nice bull flag, unconfirmed. You're gonna be waiting for it to break out. If it can indeed. Um, a lot of times you'll see it like break out, it'll back test the line before trying to go a little bit higher. So it's not just going to go straight up all the time. 
Um, it's just something to keep in mind. But um, yeah, if we zoom out a little bit here too on the weekly, um, it will be going straight into you know a downtrend line. So when it breaks out, you do have to keep your target pretty tight because you have no idea what it's going to do when it does decide to get to the line. So if it breaks out, you could look for it to reject about here. Um, so you'd be looking at like a day trade on this, like something quick, because you already do have an extension right here, you know, um, big buy imbalance. Um, eventually that probably will fill. Um, it doesn't always have to. Um, just something to keep in mind. I mean, if we measure out this move here, let's see what the bottom all the way to the top was. 48.21%. So just a monster move. I mean, you just, you just got to be careful, but technical analysis wise, this is holding a structure. So you wait for it to break out and that's it. So looking at calls on this, um, personally, you could maybe look at puts if it does reject the downtrend line. I just wouldn't want to step in front um, of this structure because you do have the pull. You have this. Um, maybe I could double top up here or something, but you know, you just got to be careful with that. A uh, very strong Dow name. I'm guessing... You know, this is playing a big role in, uh, you know, the Dow coming up pretty heavy, kind of carrying the market and um, carrying all the weight on its shoulders. It's only down like a couple percent year to date compared to tech and other stuff. I mean, it's really nice. So, yeah, nice name here. Um, just wait for that flag breakout. So, Pan W, you're looking at um, rejection. You're looking for puts maybe. Boeing, you're going to be looking at calls on the breakout um, if it, you know, confirms. Apple, we got right here, we got test number one, test number two, test number three. You'll be looking for rejection. So another put setup maybe. Um, calls you can maybe look at, but it's unconfirmed. Uh, same thing, you know, with Pan W. You're going to see it open up within the downtrend. Um, and then maybe run back down to this little pivot right here. What is that? 146. So it'll probably run down to like 146 or something before trying to curl up about there. Um, calls, I mean, you could obviously take if it gaps up over the line, you can run all the way back up to this major supply right here. So I'm going to be looking at calls and puts on this just because Apple is a very um, resilient name. It kind of does carry the market. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's not always smart to short it, but it is a good short when it's time. Um, you can see that it's got 200 EMA resistance right here. It is over the 50 EMA, though. Um, 50 did cross the 200 back here, which is actually technically a death cross. It's a bearish signal, but um, you can see right when it crossed over, it made a bottom, and now we're making a downtrend structure. So this is test number, oh, I'm sorry, this is actually test number four right here. So you got test one, test two, that's test three right here on this candle. Now we're at test four. But yeah, 200 EMA acting as resistance. Um, you have a positive MACD, so you do have that going against you if you take puts. You do have the RSI um, trading, about, trading above 40, so that could be given another positive momentum signal. But um, yeah, so just make sure you have confirmation. You want to opening up within the downtrend Monday. Um, if you're a bull, you want to see it opening up outside. And you do want to see a confirmed daily candle close um, by the end of the day, indicating that the breakout has been confirmed. So yeah, this is, um, this is pretty much a double setup. Uh, it's a little duo you're going to be looking for. Either calls or puts. Just wait for that confirmation. You know, I made it pretty clear what you're gonna be looking for. So next, so this is Tesla. This is actually probably one of my favorite counter trend setups we have here today. Um, I really like buying against the trend. Um, the premiums pay really well, and you're getting them cheaper. So. You'll notice my watch list, there are a lot of counter trend stuff, and you know, they do pretty good. Um, we had a counter trend Adobe and CRM the other week, and I mean, they just totally rocketed, they were amazing. So, it's just about knowing at the right spot to do it. Um, and you know, you usually want to wait. You know, uh, I feel like Fridays, uh, Friday's close is a really good time to um, start looking at stocks, you know, over the weekend because you do see if it you know closed on friday above a support level if it's holding good if um you're seeing bid support and both defending the area and you do have that on tesla here so we can maybe see it run back up to this little uh, resistance about 198 um you can probably round it up to like 200 bucks or something even but yeah this could be a really nice counter trend setup for calls monday you're going to want to see it open up over the support obviously before you take anything and um 
the good thing about counter trend is that you're getting it so low, your stop loss can be, you know, the risk to reward is great because you, you keep your stop loss under the under the low, right? So like slightly under 177, and you're, you know, you could have a target all the way up to the 198, 200. So great risk to reward. And um, if you do have to stop out, it's, or it's probably going to be really tight anyways because you're buying all the way down here, you're keeping a stop loss slightly under the low, and that's that. So, yeah, I really like this for calls. I'm um, going to be looking for upside. And um, I wouldn't take puts on this personally um, until you know, it got under 177 or something. So that's maybe something you could look at. I honestly wouldn't. I don't like shorting at lows. I'd rather short at a pop or you know, open a, open puts at supplies, resistance, something like that. Um, something counter trend. Just because, I mean, it's just risky because, you know, you do have that. People are eager to buy the dip right now. We've been dipping all year so. And um, the seasonality this week, it's nothing too bearish. So you do want to be careful about what you are shorting. Um, you want it to be at a trend line or something with good risk to reward, not not at lows. It's just not the area to short, in my opinion. Um, you can. It worked a lot for 2022, but um, you do always have that bounce risk, you know, at the end of the day. But yeah, Tesla, the only thing that the bulls do have going against them is this little four-hour MACD cross to the downside. Um, Otherwise, on the daily, I mean, if we zoom in, it's already in that, but you can see it's trying to curl up. So, and this is actually is technically a MACD divergence. So, what a divergence is, you got price making lower lows. You got your oscillator kind of making like you know lower highs. You know, it's trending up a little bit. Well, price is trending down. So that's actually considered a bullish divergence. You could do the same thing with RSI. Um, and MACDs also kind of give that signal too and other oscillators. So just something to keep in mind. Um, I don't think it's a good area to short at the moment. Um, your best area would have been at, you know, 200 bucks, you know, at this previous support. So yeah, looking at calls on Tesla, stop loss obviously below, you know, 177, maybe a little bit further, like 175 or something, if you want to give it a little more room. Affirm. So I really like this one. Um, you see, it just got plastered on Friday. I mean, down 7.4%. This has always been a really volatile name, so um, you have to know when to trade it. And I feel like it's given really good counter trend trades all year. Um, you can see when it, when it starts selling hard, you do get these violent pops um, back to the you know 50 moving average, or you know eventually it does have a little mean regression. So, but this right here. Let me find the tool. Sorry, let me turn this magnet off. All right. So you do have a drop base rally. So the drop base rally demand um, sequence goes, it goes with a drop, creates a base, rally super hard, comes back down, and you enter on the first test, and um, it gives really good you know, uh, risk to reward. And what it does, um, or I'm sorry, what you can look for is a run back up to maybe 164.74, 116, something like that. Um, you do want to see confirmation of it holding demand, obviously, um, which is pretty likely unless you get a pretty violent gap down. Um, if it does open up inside demand, you still have a pretty good chance to you know, start running back up because you're still within the general vicinity. Um, it would obviously be invalid if it broke through demand. It'd probably break through, come back up test before trying to go lower, you know, something like that. You know, stocks do the same thing to the upside, they'll break out, pull back, then go higher. Um, it's just all about structures and waiting to see if something holds. So, yeah, really like this drop base rally demand. Look for it to hold up. We'll be looking at calls on this. Um, Tesla, we're going to be looking at calls. Apple, you do have a case for both sides. But right now, um, it's at the downtrend, so you're probably going to be looking at puts unless it gaps over the line. BA, you're going to be looking uh, for the flag breakout, wait for confirmation, set an alert at the upper line. Pan W, um, you're going to see it open up within the downtrend line. Maybe look at puts on that and um, calls if it does want to break out. But right now, you know, it does have that strong rejection at test three. So, all right. So, next, let's go into the indexes. So, go over the indexes and we'll also go over the seasonality on the SP. So last week, um, pulled into the 61.8% retracement on ES, the S&P. 
um, clear line of resistance. We had IWM our list last week for puts. Um, there, these both of these names, ES and RTY, which is also SPY or IWM, it's the same thing. Um, they pulled into the 61.8. They had 200 EMA resistance. Um, so clear line of resistance, and you can see it, it's rejected a couple times. But right now it's just making a structure. So we didn't do jack last week. Um, we just stayed in this range. One could argue, you know, we're like forming a little flag or something. You know what I mean? Um, obviously unconfirmed, but, you know, that is something to look for. These structures, and just because it can't get over a level doesn't ever mean that, you know, it's just going to reject straight up. You know, it could trade like this for a little bit before trying to go higher. Um, or going to trade like this for a little bit before trying to go lower. But um, you can see we formed nice demand down here. I would say this is going to be tested eventually. But um, right now we don't really have any clear signals. It's not breaking under this previous resistance right here or the 50% Fibonacci. Um, if it did get under, get under that, it would head to this 50 EMA and also this demand. So no clear setup on this at the moment. Um, I did take some spy calls so at towards the close. I took a pretty small position um, based on the seasonality. We do have a nice, nice structure forming. So I'm speculating on the fact that, you know, this, this range can turn into a little bit more. But um, we'll have to see. Let's see. Let's um, add this magnet back on. We do have this little trend line forming. So you got test one, test two, test three. Um, it could come back down eventually and, you know, just ride its way back up but yeah um, nothing too specific just make sure um, you know 3900s are holding at a minimum and um, you know in order to go higher we will have to get over this 200 EMA and also this you know pivot at like you know 4050 um, and that will run into supply and also that downtrend line we covered last week so yep no specific setup on this just look out for the structure um, maybe wait for confirmation Let's go ahead and get into the seasonality too, and we'll go into uh, we'll go into this NQ next. All right, so this is the S and P. Um, this is the SPX. You can see um, this is the last seventy two years um, for each midterm year put into one chart, and um, I mean it's just been following it great all year. So we cover you know we cover this specific um, timeline, and you can see we're averaging a 027 percent return to the upside for the twenty first through the 25th, which is our trading week. Um, so maybe don't go crazy with the spy shorts or anything like that. Um, also keep an eye on the VIX and dollar, you know, make sure volatility is in your favor first before, you know, trying to call a top or anything like that. Um, maybe stick to individual names that do have a little more volatility for shorts, you know, like Pan W um, that I recommended this week um, to look at, you know, just stuff there, you know, you are getting a nice range. Um, and you know you can be in and out real quick because you do get that volatility. Because um, shorts, I mean, they're still at risk a little bit because you do have the VIX under, um, and you have other signals that you know we may rally for the rest of the year, um, especially until we see Jerome Powell um, speak live again. You know, see his opinion on the inflation report that came out. Um, inflation did go down our last CPI report, so just something to keep in mind. So yeah, 0.27 percent return of the upside, and um, yeah. Could be a good one. Um, we'll have to see. We did average a dip last week. We kind of did get that. I mean, we didn't really get any upside or downside. So you can see, I mean, this little area right here, it kind of did do that um, word for word. I'll take a sip of water real quick. So, yeah, I mean, you can see it's falling the season out again. We, we did have a rally in about the same period um, with the exception for like one week. And then it creates the range, just like we have this week. So maybe we could see it, you know, see that range of flag on the ES break out and go a little higher. NQ, you can see it's kind of doing the same thing. Um, but it, this one is going under the 38.2, which is also, you know, previous resistance. ES is holding over its previous resistance. So that's where they differ right now. Um, NASDAQ, you want to see it holding up this level. You want to see it holding up. A little bit better, maybe reclaim it, and it's also gonna have to get over that 50 fib um, in order to go higher. So yeah, no setup on this right now at the moment. I'm just making a structure. You do have a positive MACD, our size above 40, so no clear sign like short or anything yet. Um, you could argue that since it's going back within resistance, it could make a good short. But you also do have the 50 EMA right here, 
um, still holding, and you do have a lot of room up to the 200. And you saw what ES did. Um, it hit the 200 before, you know, finding, you know, resistance. So it's a good mean regression price target, um, the 200 EMA. If you don't know, that's the 200-day moving average. So, yeah, no clear setup on this either. Uh, pretty much looks the same as ES. Um, no, like, you know, clear trend line or anything like that. This is more of like a bottom forming. Um, you can see the double bottom. It just have to hold this back test and, you know, be able to go higher first. Um, but you want to see it holding previous resistance. RTY, small mid caps. Um, we covered this one last week. Uh, we have we were looking at puts on this due to the three factor conf, uh, confluence, which was you got sixty one point eight um, resistance, which is usually always a pretty clear resistance area. The first time I test test sixty one point eight, um, it's always a pretty clean short setup. You also have the two hundred EMA to act as resistance, and there was also supply right here. Um, it looked a little bit cleaner on IWM, but it's a rally-based drop supply zone. And um, so you had those three factors, um, which gave you a good confirmation to take puts, either for a day trade, um, maybe a swing trade if you had time on your contracts. But yeah, no clear setup uh, this week. Um, we could see it maybe dip down just a little bit, try to hold up the trend line, head back up to the 61.8. But right now you can see, you know, just making higher highs and higher lows so um still an uptrend with the argument for it's trading under the 200 ema so technically you know the trend is not set in stone yet um, you do want to see all indexes getting back over this you know to give an early sign of you know any bull run or anything like that and you see what happened when it got over this um that doesn't always mean if it gets over the 200 that you're going to be straight but um, it is a good indicator, you know, when financial conditions are a little, you know, a little better than they are right now. So, yeah, I don't really see anything clear. Um, we're going to see, see it reclaiming, obviously, this previous resistance. Also cleared this high right here. Um, bears are going to see it, you know, break the trend line and um, maybe even head to this little demand right here. So, yeah. Next, we'll go into the VIX. So this was an interesting one. Um, the average close, the 2022 average close actually dropped from 2620s um, down to 2614 after multiple closes under the average and brought the average down. So if I go into the data real quick, not anything like too specific or anything, but Friday's close would put us at 2311 and um, this week's close is, you know, did bring us down to the 2614. Um, you can see that it's still trading under the average, still trading under our 50 EMA that we added on this data. And um, yeah, I don't think it's really low enough yet to start shorting. Um, it's pretty much like the same thing as last week. Um, I'm pretty sure we opened up here. Um, I'm sorry, we, put, we closed here on Friday. And um, yeah, so we're, we closed here this Friday. So really nothing has changed. Um, you want to see... Bulls are, I'm sorry, bears are going to see it holding up this 2264. Um, curl back up, head back up to the average. Bulls, you're going to see it really clear this 2264 level that it couldn't clear last week and head back down to 19s, 20s. Um, once it gets to 19s, 20s, we'd be looking for, you know, the mean regression back to the 2022 average close because it did get low enough. Um, just like when it got up to 35, it mean regressed. We want to see it going a little bit lower to mean regress back to the upside. Um, that's when we, you know, we could get in some cheap shorts and look at puts down here, maybe. Uh, for the S&P, of course. And, you know, other market names that are, you know, are going to move with the S&P. So, yeah, nothing changed from last week. Look at the same level. The only thing that changed is the 2614 uh, average close. DXY, so the dollar. Um, this one did change a little bit. We were looking for it to fall a little bit more, and... I said currency traders would probably be looking for it to reverse about here um, at the 200 EMA, which it exactly did. Um, you can see it's trying to build up a base right here. Um, I had a max PT price target at like 104, 103s, and I get that from you know this previous support. And um, if we zoom out a little bit, the 103s actually come from this. Um, 
you can see it's like 102.99, so I just rounded up to 103s, but it is a previous um, peak, very strong peak, um, back in 2020, actually, when COVID was just hitting. So I was looking for it to come down, you know, maybe as low as that. Um, but in the back of my mind, you always, you know, we always have to consider that it is um, holding the 200 EMA, and the currency traders are going to look, you know, to buy the dip, you know, or go long the dollar. Um, if it acts as support, it confirmed a couple candles that it's holding. So currency traders, you know, are trying to go long here. Um, maximum, uh, I could see it maybe going up to this little previous support and rejecting. Um, that's only if, you know, the same thing happens as last week. You know, um, we're not seeing any, you know, FUD or any fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And, you know, other scares and volatility. Um, if we do get some scares and volatility, we could get over, you know, get through it and we'll head back up to this one. So yeah, I just want to, you know, always, always track the dollar, you know, and realize that it, you know, most of the time it's going to inverse the market because it does impact, you know, international, um, profits and, um, corporate entities and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, Maximum for the downside, probably head back to, you know, 200 EMA, maybe try to curl up there. But right now it's in a mid-range. It's not at any inflection point. So we're going to see it trade a little bit more um, before making any, you know, distinctions on what it's going to do exactly. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe our X-Trades YouTube channel. Um, let's hope the setups are just as good as last week. We had some good stuff last week, so... Um, just remember to always wait for confirmation and realize a couple of these this week, you're going to have to wait again. Um, just like, you know, last week. So y'all have a blessed Sunday. I'm going to go ahead and end this video, go ahead and send it over to our person to get it uploaded and, um, get it posted up for you along with the watch list. And remember, I do post a written report version of this. Um, if you want a quick summary, just check the watch list, watch list channel and extra discord and you'll see it right there. All right, guys. Love you. Bye.